Morning all. Today we're going to do some dyeing. I have my Greener Shades Acid Dye Starter Kit, but it only has a quarter of an ounce, I believe. Yes, a quarter of an ounce of each dye, which doesn't take up much of the jar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to consolidate these colors into my larger ones, and then I'm going to use the leftover dyes in these to dye some fiber. So I have 400 grams of fiber soaking here. It's in a, a acid solution. I use some uh, citric acid, uh, four tablespoons in this. And I'm gonna pull out my crock pots. Right now I'm heating some water to take the dyes out of the containers. And then we'll pop them all into the slow cookers and we'll let them cook and see what colors we get. I suspect we'll get some pale shades, but it's hard to say how much dye is gonna be left over in the jars. I'm going to uh, put on a mask and do this. So while I'm doing that, I'll just put it on time lapse and we'll meet back here when we're ready to dye. Well, that ended up a little messier than I thought. Apparently, these little jugs are not designed to take heat. So I had to do a quick plan change, just rinse out the jars, throw them into uh, these jars. So they're all mixed up. And I did end up with some dyes on here, which I will probably shake into a dye bath, just so I don't waste them. But all of my dyes are now into each container. And I can put this away and it's good to go. So for crock pots, 
it seems eventually everyone the thermostat goes and then it, you can no longer control the temperature and that's when I get them they're donated to me when people get their new crock pots and I use them for dyeing so we need some hot water in these so I am going to fill them in the sink and I will come back when we're ready to start adding dye to fiber I've learned with experience that this one here because it's taller the bottom of the fiber generally doesn't get color so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the extra color that I have wrapped up in my towel here somewhere is and I'm going to put that into the bottom of this one because you know I hate to waste there we go all right Sink. And this is why I have like a gazillion towels for sopping up messes and drying my hands and cleaning stuff up. All right. Now, fiber. I'm only going to put 100 grams in here. And I'm going to use my soak water because it's already got acid in it to top up that's about good so that's got an orangey tone to the bottom so let's go with Um, let's put in the Amazon green. Don't ask. I'm just experimenting. We're just going to pour that on top. Get that jar to be washed. Just going to give a little poke. And then... I'm going to take the sunset orange and pour that around the edge. And let's see what happens there. All right, next. Now this one is nice and square and big. So I'm going to put two braids in here, but or two, 200 grams in here. But what I'm gonna do is start by dyeing the bottom layer, then add water and dye the top layer. And then we'll have another 100 grams here. All right. And we'll add some acid water. All right. Actually, I think I'm going to do two in this one because it's a little deeper than this one. All right. Yeah, you know, I change my mind all the time. Um, is that black, blue, purple? I want purple. This is flame red. And yellow. All right. That's what we're going with on that one. I have no idea. I'm just throwing stuff on and we'll see how the colors look when they're done. 
So that leaves four colors for this. So on the bottom layer, we're going to put black. Try to get that under the fiber a little more. And then on this side, we're putting red. All right. And we're going to take our last bunch of fiber. And we'll get this on top. In case you hadn't guessed, I do dyeing like I do everything. Just sort of toss it all in and see what happens. And then we're going to take some blue and put it on the black end. And some coral reef aqua. And we'll put that on the red end. Oh, that was really loud and hurt on my ears. Okay. So there we go. We have our dye baths ready. Now we just need to apply heat. Now I have to have an electrician in to run me some more plugs in my dye room. So this black one's going to stay in here. These two are going to go out into the other room and be hooked up to heat. I will let you know the results when I find them out myself. All right, so we got our crock pots up to temperature and you can see the dye bath is completely clear and there's some very interesting colors happening. I'm kind of excited. So what I'm going to do now is just shut this off and just let it cool on its own. And we'll go through here and we'll check these ones. There's some really interesting colors happening here. And the dye bath is clear. So we'll do the same thing with this one. Just shut it off and check the last one. The color, like the light in here is horrible, so the color is not showing up great, but trust me, they're gorgeous. Okay, that one's clear too. So, we will shut that one off. Now, I'm going to let these cool for several hours, just in case there's any dye left in there, but I will let them cool and then I will rinse them probably later tonight, and then... Let's set them out to dry and we'll see what we have. All right, let's see what we got. Wow, there's some lovely peaches. There's some browns, some greens. Whew, this turned out pretty. All right, I'm going to put that into the into the soap bath. I'm using um, two-in-one shampoo. I find it strips off any loose dye really well, and it conditions it a bit. Here's bin number two. It's like purple, pink, and yellow. And white underneath. I didn't figure I would get much coverage with this since I was just using what was left. 
in the uh, jars. But I think that can make a very interesting effect too. purples some purple splashes I think once this is spun it would actually come out pretty cool there's some gorgeous colors in there and a big patch of purple I think I used black in there, didn't I? So it must have been a low enough dye volume that it came up purple. So put that in the soap bath. And let's check out the last bin. Now this one had 200 grams of fiber in two layers so this was the bottom one it's a very lovely pale pink with some little spots of a lovely blue into a gray and blue Some more pinks and blues it's like it gets darker as it goes down so it starts off very very pastel then it starts to get like moody wow that turned out super cool i am not disappointed in the least all right i'll plop that in the bath and let's have a look at the last one this one came out very pastel. It's like cotton candy colors. Oh, it's so pretty. Look. Oh, 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 there you are. You really can't see in this light. Once it's all dried up, though, I will get some pictures in proper lighting. I did just order better lights for my basement today so that you can see better as we're playing on our projects. But this one is some lovely blues and pinks. So considering I was just mucking about with what was left in jars, I'm pretty pleased with how things turned out. So I'm going to give them a soak in soapy water. Give them a rinse, get them out to dry, and then when they're dry, we'll have another look. See you in a bit. All right, I'm using my little Ot light here to hopefully give us proper lighting to see some colors. So let's have a look at a tangled pile here. So our roving is all dry now. And we're going to have a look at some colors. I like how this gets darker as it goes along. And surprisingly enough, there are some shades of brown in here that actually just seem to blend really well with the blues and the pinks. There's one braid. Let's have a look at some more. This one I just adore. It's like peaches and greens with some oranges and yellows and it just turned out so pretty. Here we go. I love the colors. I think it looks amazing. All right, and there's our braid. It's so pretty. I'm very, very happy. Next would be the cotton candy one. 
and it came in in some blues, some light blues, some pinks, a little bit of tealy colors in there, and some whites. It's just a very nice pastel -y type of braid or roving. It's not a braid yet because I'm about to do that. And there's that one. They're so fluffy. And here's our last one. This one turned out very interesting because the color, there wasn't enough to penetrate all the fiber. So the color sat on the surface and made like this splotchy dye with these beautiful, like there's purple, reddy orange, orange, yellow. It's just, it came out very pretty. And I'm very curious to see how this one is gonna spin up. But you can see how it just literally sat on the top edge that was sitting at the top of the pot and it really didn't penetrate to the bottom, which turned out really cool actually. <laughs> I think it's very neat. Now the trick is going to be when spinning it is the white is going to blend out these colors and they're going to come out much, much lighter than they appear here. So I'm going to be very curious to see how this spins up or if maybe I will tear the braid down, take out the chunks of color and spin them to try to keep them darker and truer. I don't know. That'll be an interesting experiment. But since this was just literally an experiment, I just didn't want to waste the dyes that were in those jars. Well, that chunk came up really pretty. Um, I'm, I'm not displeased at all. I think this is amazing roving that came out. So there's that one. So these were our end of the jar, end of the jars, uh, rovings. So I hope you had fun trying this out with me. I know I had a blast and I will probably start spinning these up to see what kind of yarns we can make out of them. Um, play with the colorways and stuff to see how we can make some pretty yarn. So thanks for joining me guys. Subscribe if you want to continue on with some of the craziness. See what we get up to next. And I'll talk to you next time. Bye.